Depending on the lens with which you shoot a photograph, you may get some lens-related errors in your photo. Photoshop's Lens Correction Filter, which has been revamped for Photoshop CS5, can help correct the three most common kinds of lens-related errors. One of those is geometric distortion. Either barrel distortion, which is a bowing out as you see here and over here, usually caused by a wide-angle lens, or pin cushioning, which is a bowing in. Another common lens-related error is vignetting, which is the falloff of light at the corners of an image that can appear to darken the edges. And you can see some of that here in this image at the corners. And a third common lens-related error is lateral chromatic aberration, a fancy name for color fringing that you might find along areas of high contrast. So you might expect a little color fringing here. I don't see too much, though. Sometimes the color fringing is red to cyan. Sometimes it's yellow to blue. Sometimes it's green to magenta. So Photoshop's lens correction filter, even back in Photoshop CS4, was able to deal with all three of those problems. But in CS4, the filter had only manual controls that enabled you to try to address those problems by dragging sliders around. In Photoshop CS5, the manual sliders are still there as an option, but even better, now the lens correction filter will try to make the corrections for you automatically. Let's see how this works. I'm going to access the lens correction filter from the filter menu. The first thing to notice about it is that it is moved so that it's now more discoverable and more accessible. In Photoshop CS4, lens correction used to be down in the distort category of filters, and now it's up here at the top level of the filter menu. So I'll choose Lens Correction, and that opens this big Lens Correction dialog box. In the last version of Photoshop, there was only one set of controls. Here, there are two tabs, each with different controls. I'll click on the Custom tab, so you can see that these are manual controls, very much like the manual controls in Photoshop CS4. So I'm going to concentrate on the Auto Correction tab first. As soon as I open an image into the Lens Correction filter, here in the Auto Correction tab, Photoshop automatically tries to apply the right corrections to fix the image. More specifically, it tries to correct any or all of the three properties that are listed here, which are the three problems that I mentioned at the beginning of this movie. Right now, it's only trying to fix geometric distortion because that's the only problem that's checked here. If I also want Photoshop to try to automatically remove the vignettes at the corners, I'll check Vignette and keep your eye on the image as I do that. I think that's a little bit better. Now if I want to compare a before and after with and without these corrections, I'll uncheck Preview. So there's the original image, and here it is with the automatic corrections. There's really no reason to have it correct chromatic aberration here because there doesn't appear to be a problem. If, as a result of any correction, there is an edge showing around the image, by default, Photoshop automatically scales the image to fill in that gap. So that you can see what I mean, I'm going to uncheck Auto Scale Image, and I'm also going to uncheck these corrections and ask Photoshop to try to correct chromatic aberration, even though there isn't much in this image. I did that because, in this case, that puts this little gap at the right edge of the image. And I can tell Photoshop how to fill in that gap either with transparency, the current choice, or with black, with white, or I can ask it to extend that edge. I'm going to put these settings back to their defaults, uncheck chromatic aberration, and have it attempt to fix the other two problems. In order to know how to try to fix the problems caused by this particular lens and camera combination, Photoshop is using the EXIF data, a form of metadata that the camera with which this photo was taken attached to this image. Photoshop is trying to match the camera and lens that were used for this picture to a lens profile that tells it how to compensate for the characteristics of that particular combination of that particular lens on that particular camera. And the EXIF data is displayed down here at the bottom left. This photo was taken with this kind of a Canon camera and with this model lens. This is a zoom lens, so I even can see here that the zoom was set to 24 millimeters, which is a relatively wide angle, which accounts for the barrel distortion and the vignetting. Over here in the lens profile area, I can see the camera lens profile that Photoshop is using in this case. Adobe already has some camera lens profiles made, like this one, which is for the same lens that was used to take this picture, but for a slightly different camera model. Now, camera model isn't as crucial to match as the lens, so the correction here is almost okay, but not quite. 
If you look at the left-hand doorway, you can see that it's a little bit bowed in now. So my next step is going to be to ask Photoshop to go out to an Adobe server and try to find a camera lens profile that more exactly matches the EXIF data attached to this image. It's great to be able to do this, but I can only do this if I'm working with a photo that does have EXIF data attached to it. Almost any photo from an SLR these days will have that, but not necessarily a photo from a point-and-shoot camera or perhaps from a camera phone. Before I ask Photoshop to search online for a lens profile, I'm going to give it some search criteria. It already knows that the camera make is Canon. I'm going to tell it the camera model. It doesn't show the exact camera model that was used, so I'll just choose Canon. And then I'll look in the lens model menu for the 24 to 105 zoom lens that was used to take this photo, and here it is. So I'll select that. And then I'll click search online. And the results are nil. Unfortunately, no online profiles that matched those criteria were found. So we're back to the original lens profile, which is close, but not exact. In this case, what I would probably do is start with the corrections that were made automatically here, and then click on the Custom tab and see if I could tweak the results a little bit. So I'll try moving this slider maybe a little bit over to the left. And if I'm having trouble, I'll turn on a grid by checking Show Grid. By the way, the grid was always on by default in Photoshop CS4 and sometimes was in the way, so I had to turn it off. I like it better having Show Grid off by default as it is here in CS5. But I'm going to check Show Grid, and then I'll use that as I move this slider to try to straighten up the edges of that doorway just a bit. And then I'll uncheck the grid, and I'll go with that.